So on this video, I'm going to start with something a little bit different, and I'm actually going to start by shooting. So I shot the P10, the PPQ, and the Glock 19. You'll notice the bottom left, those wild shots came from the PPQ. So I was a little bit off that day, but overall, the guns, and uh, I got some things to say about that PPQ, so stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back to 1776 or bust. So on the table, you see three just completely amazing firearms. You have your Walther PPQ, your Glock 19 Gen 4, and uh, your CZ P10C. Now, uh, I have to say I shot these guns uh, last weekend uh, when I was testing this one because it just came back from CZ. And I really wanted to put them up against each other to see which one I actually like more. Now, I'll be honest with you guys, I've always been a huge fan of the PPQ. I think if you guys have seen the channel or have paid attention to the channel, you'll know that this is probably one of my my best guns that I own. Um, I've always said to me, this is, in my, my opinion, probably the best trigger on the market. Now, and before we get started, I'll just, gun is checked, safety's checked. Um, there's a mag, I'll even throw it over to the side. But in regards to the PPQ, one of the things that I've always liked about the PPQ is twofold. It's the ergonomics of the handgun and also the trigger. Now, there are some things about the PPQ for me personally that I think stand out amongst the rest, and that obviously is the ergos and the trigger. Now, there are some things that I think maybe can be approved, improved a little bit on this gun. For example, I really would like to see one day um, the PPQ get a little bit lower in the slide. You know, if you kind of look at the way the slide is milled, um, it does sit pretty high on the frame. You know, if there was a way for them to maybe lower this a little bit more so it gets a little bit deeper into your hand, uh, I think this gun would just be even better. Now, maybe that'll happen in a uh, an M3 version of this, but who knows? And uh, my other biggest beef was the back here. Um, when it sits in your hand, you know, you do have to adjust a little bit. Um, and the reason being is if you have smaller hands, the way they cut this in the back, it, it does kind of round up on the sides, but the problem is, is that it's a little bit thicker and a little bit more square than, let's say, the uh, the P10. I mean, even though it's about uh, the same thickness, the way the P10 kind of rotates, or I shouldn't say rotate, but almost like it bevels up, you'll realize that, um, you know, it actually fits your hand a little bit better, plus the, the grip of the gun is a little bit thinner than the PPQ, even with the uh, the thin back strap. Although, don't get me wrong, the PPQ still is amazing in the, in the hand. Now, uh, the reason why I shot him was because I wanted to see if I could still say that the PPQ was the best. And I'll be honest with you guys, and again, that's, I've tried to do this on the channel as much as possible, although I will tell you that my history with the PPQ is one I've always been very biased towards it. Now, after, uh, however, after shooting that day, I have to tell you guys that, uh, you know, I don't know if the, that PPQ is still on the top of my list. Now, don't get me wrong, fantastic firearm, guys. I, I can't say enough about it. But after shooting all three back to back to back, I, I really have to go back and say to myself, there are some things with the PPQ that I think are maybe not so positive, I guess you could say. Now, if you're a first time shooter and you're looking for a great polymer striker fired gun, I would actually turn you away from the PPQ just for now. And the reason being is because you really do need some time behind this gun. And I'll explain about that in a moment. Now, the Glock 19, the Gen 4, again, safety check it. It's, it's loaded. I've been carrying it. Um, the Gen 4 Glock 19, in my opinion, is a fine generation of Glocks. I have had no issues with this gun. Um, obviously, a lot of people compliment the Cerakote job, and I have to say it is pretty friggin' awesome. Um, but ultimately, I think the Gen 4 for me is, is the perfect Glock. Now, again, it's not about agreeing or disagreeing. There are some people who hate Glocks, some people who love Glocks. Uh, I like them. I don't love them, and I don't hate them. I like them. 
Um, they're not the most ergonomic. They're not the most comfortable. But in my opinion, they always shoot pretty well for me. They're always reliable, and I've never had any issues with any of my Glocks in the past. With that being said, it actually outshot the PPQ. Now, some might say, well, how is that? How could this gun outshoe the finest trigger on the market, in my opinion, with some of the best ergos? Again, I'll explain that to you in a little bit. Then we get to the P10. Magazine is empty. Gun is empty and clear. And the P10C, fantastic gun. Uh, again, I did have some issues with it, so I did take it and send it back to CZ. It came back, it fired about uh, 200 rounds through it, and it worked flawlessly, which was great. Now, the P10 has a lot going for it, guys. There's no doubt about it. There's the low, um, and I won't even call it a bore axis, I'll call it more of a slide height. Um, it's a lower slide height uh, than the other two, uh, probably more so the PBQ than the Glock 19 but um, the fit in the hand is very comfortable. Now, there are some people who don't necessarily like that aggressive stippling or texturing on the grip. I don't think it's actually that bad. I think it's pretty comfortable. Even carrying this gun is comfortable without a t-shirt, uh, or I should say an undershirt. Don't go you know, with no t-shirt, that's kind of gross. But anyway, um, when you look at the gun, the gun really does do a lot in regards to the aesthetic value of the handgun, um, but shooting this gun is just extremely fun. And the reason why I say that is because it's extremely accurate. Um, this gun just hits everything, anything, anywhere, anytime, all day long. And for me, that's great because it makes me look like a great shooter when I'm really not. However, I would tell you that there are some things about this gun that, you know, are, are a little bit sketchy right now for me. Obviously, I had the issue uh, where I had to send it back and there were some issues with the gun. And, uh, you know, they replaced this back piece and, and all that or the back plate and everything else. But at the same time, I don't know if I can rely on it at this point. Now, of course, a couple hundred rounds more, I'll probably feel much more conf confident with it. Um, but you know what? There are some little uh, tweaks here and there that need to, uh, I think, be smoothed out a little bit as this gun progresses and as eventually newer generations of this gun are made. Obviously, uh, main complaint from a lot of people are the mag release uh, being a little bit too stiff. I will tell you, it will loosen up over time. If I can get that in there, it'd be great. Um, however, it isn't the easiest with a full mag, but it's super easy with an empty mag. Not like that makes a difference. Again, the slide release, again, not that easy to use. Obviously, it breaks in a little bit more over time, but with a full magazine, it's very, very hard to do that. So you'll be forced to either, you know, uh, slingshot it or as you bring your, your um, support hand forward, maybe hitting it so that when you're bringing that hand, and I can't even do it, there we go, uh, maybe something like that, but who knows, you know, it's going to be up to you really. So, I mean, overall, all three guns were really good that day. Um, the PPQ didn't shoot as good as I wanted it to. And it could have been an off day for me. It could also be that I was very far removed from the PPQ for a while. I haven't shot it in forever. And uh, that particular day just wasn't a good day of shooting for me uh, in general. However, the other two handguns definitely, in my opinion, outshot the PPQ. It's not a fault of the PPQ necessarily. I think it's just an interesting thing to discuss. And the reason being is because... A lot of people will say the PPQ has a great trigger, but I also think that might be a flaw of it because when you don't shoot this for a while and you go back to it from some other handguns, you really got to develop a little bit more um, patience with the trigger. And the reason why I say that is because the trigger is just buttery smooth and then it's already 100% pre-cocked, so it doesn't take much to actually drop that trigger. I mean, it's super light, um, it's super smooth. The reset, again, super light as well and it doesn't take much effort. So again, when you're going back and forth between these three guns, this Glock 19 has the Apex trigger in it. It's done a great job, but it's still not a PPQ trigger. The P10, it's pretty good, all right? Um, here's your take up. I let, it's a little bit uh, a little bit spongy there, but not too bad. And then there's your break. Your reset, super short as well, with a little bit less pressure than a Glock 19, but still, a little bit heavier than this PPQ. At least it feels that way. It may not measure that way, but it certainly feels that way. I mean, overall, you can't go wrong with any of these guns, but I would definitely definitely say if you're looking for that first gun, um, you know, maybe not go for that PPQ just yet. And if you do get the PPQ, spend a lot of time training with it. Now, does that make it my least favorite handgun? Of course it doesn't. It's a fantastic gun. It's a gun that I would recommend to anybody who's out there looking for a great handgun. But I will tell you still right now, as it stands, that's still my favorite. Um, this to me is the best of all worlds. You got a, a great ergonomic grip. You got an amazingly light four pound trigger on this right now. And uh, while there's no real great reset, look at this trigger guys. There's your take up and it breaks. Travels a little bit further, 
and the PPQ. There's your reset. It's really light. You can't even really feel it or hear it, but then it breaks again. Trigger is super smooth. Um, the ergonomics on this gun are excellent, even for such a thick, fat gun, but it's still definitely one of my favorites at this point. Again, Really, it's going to be up to you what you decide. I think the PPQ is still one of the dominant firearms in the industry right now. Uh, again, could it use a refreshing? I think so, probably. The P10, definitely a great handgun. The Glock 19, well, guys, it's a Glock 19. It's going to shoot, and it's going to shoot it well. So I'd like to hear what you guys have to say. Do you think the PPQ is something that uh, can be used by beginners? Do you think it's something that people should wait on until they get a little bit more... Um, I guess you can say proficient with other handguns, or do you think it's a good gun to start with? And uh, of the three guns, well, say, let's say the four guns, if you have experience with all four guns, which one do you prefer? Now, I know a lot of you haven't really gotten experience with the, the Steyr. I'm telling you guys, this gun is fantastic. But if you have experience with all four or a few of them, let us know what you think about them and why you like them. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Tell me what you think. Give a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Again, keep in mind on every Wednesday we have a live chat, myself, KS Gun Guy, and Big Johnson. And uh, we'll be having that this Wednesday. I believe it is on Big Johnson's channel. And uh, hopefully you guys can join us. We like to talk about anything that deals with guns and just kind of, you know, hear what you guys have to say and include you in the conversation, which I don't know, guys, if you ever watch those other live chats, they don't do that very often, but we do. So I hope you guys watch it. Stay tuned. There's going to be plenty more content, whether it's monetized or not. And I hope you guys are staying safe out there. Happy Halloween. And as always, freedom is never free.